Hey everyone, this is my second attempt at recording this. I had some microphone issues. I um, actually ended up sounding like a chipmunk on it. If you ever want a humorous thing, I'll, I'll, I'll show you how to find logarithmic functions. So I made a small mistake at the end of class. I was rushing. Um, so I'm going to record this video and we're going to start class this way anyway. But I'm going to go back to the data that we we're, we we're using. So let me set up the data. Let me set up what we need to do here and then in, we'll pull back from it. So I'll start by plotting, writing down the data. So we were talking about how fast people um, travel in cities and our theory is going to be that the population determines the walking speed. And we'll measure the uh, population in thousands of people and the walking speed in feet per second. And so let me get our data here. And we, we had mental notes. We made a mental note that if we think of a small town, um, people casually walk through it. They stop at the shops. They go slowly. And the bigger the town, um, the more the, the layout and the motion of other people drive their walking speed. And so, the, um, so we could think of the average walking speed of people based as a function on population. So the population is going to be our independent variable and the walking speed is going to be the dependent variable. And this was the data that was measured from cities. Um, this was a Nature article called The Pace of Life. It was written in 1976. And so what we're saying is that the walking speed is a function of population. So let's turn this into some axes. All right, so our independent variable will go on the bottom. So this is the walking speed in feet per second. And, oh, no, independence population, bad Jeff. This is population in thousands, and this is the walking speed in feet per second, right? Some proportional, some proportionality, some function of p. That's what we've got to find is the relationship. So let's see. I'm eventually going to get a template that draws grid lines for me. Uh, I like drawing the graph because I can show you the construction mechanisms. Yes, perfect. So 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, 1, 1.2, 1.4, 1.6, 1.8, 2, 2.2. And so I, I have the beginning of my graph. This is going to be the hard one. We're not creating a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and miscounted there. 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35. And so I'll make each of these 10. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 150, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, two, so that's 200, 10, 20, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 250, 60, 70, 80, 90, 300, 10, 20, 30, 40, 350. And so there, I, I have, have an axis. So I'm going to put my data on. And so somewhere around 5, let me put my data in big blue dots. I'm going to do big blue dots. 
So around 5, I'm at 0 0.6. At 14, so in here somewhere, I'm at 1. At 71, so there's 50, 60, 71. Up here somewhere, I'm at 1.6. Let so me, 60, about here. At 1.9, so there's one that just short shy of 200, which is here. So I come up here, I'm at 1.9 up here, just below 2, somewhere over here ish. And at 342, I'm at 2.2, so I'm up here. And when we look at this, this should remind us of a logarithmic function. And so we want to find a function that curves like this. We'll connect our data points together, so connecting the dots. Now, a general logarithm function. So if we're hunting for a logarithm function, we're going to use our data to find it. So in general, I can take a log function, the general form of a log function. It crosses the x-axis at 1 comma 0. And it's really close to here, comes up, cuts through here, curves down slow. And so this point is 1 comma 0. Now if I add to the log function, I shift this point up. And if I multiply the log function, I widen or narrow the curve. So there's two things I can do. I can shift it up or down and I can widen or narrow it. And what that looks like is, I'll put a generic log function here, f of x equals a plus b ln x. Shifting up and down is the a. Remember chapter two, function shifts. Right? Here's my function. I'm multiplying it, which spreads it out, and then I'm shifting it up or down. So I have two coefficients that will determine my model. So I need two equations. Well, I have multiple points of data. So I'm going to take two points. Now, the points I'm going to focus on are going to be this one and this one. I'm going to skip one point in the middle. Computer software, what computer software will do is it'll take these, this point and make it fit the data. It'll take this point and this point. It'll take this point and this point. It'll take this point and this point. Then it'll jump over to this point, it'll do this point and this point, it'll do this point and this point, it'll do this point and this point. Then it'll jump over to this one and it'll do this one and this one, it'll do this one and this one, and then it'll do this one and this one. And it'll end up with, with, with a, a series of solutions. Um, what is it? One, two, three, four, five. So it's five factorial um, solutions that it has done. There's repeats in it, so five factorial over n minus one factorial number of co combinations it has to do to work out every every possibility and then it averages it finds the, the smallest distance between all of those we're just going to use two points it's not a bad way to do it especially if our data is looking very solidly logarithmically in the next video i'll show you how to get software to to give you um, approximations for this too and it'll give you a goodness of fit measure uh coming across how good a fit means but that's what your upper level statistics classes are for is what your goodness of fit in modeling is. But we'll do a basic model here. So let's see, my one point, the y value is one. So I'm gonna have two equations, equation number one. I'm gonna have 1.0 is equal to a plus b ln, right? Because 1.0 is my y value of 14. And the second equation I'm gonna have I, can't, I skipped one, so it's going to be 1.9 is equal to A plus B ln 138. Now, equations and functions, in this point we have an equation. We have a left-hand side and a right-hand side. And I want you to appreciate that the left-hand side is a number. Now, that number is equivalent to this representation here. So I can do things. I can take 1.9 and I can add 1 to it. I can take 1.9 and I can multiply it by 1. I can take 1.9 and I can subtract 1 from it. And I can take 1.9 and I can divide 1 by it. I can take 1.9 to the power of 1. Anything I can do mathematically with the left-hand side, well, I should be able to do the same to the right-hand side. 
And what we want to do is we want to get it down to one variable. We want to annihilate one variable. And so in this case, A is hanging out in the front. So if I subtract the first equation from the second one, A should go away for me. So let's do that. So I'll write the second one first. 1.9 equals A plus B ln 138. I'll write the second equation, 1.0 equals A plus B ln 14. And I'm going to subtract. So I'm going to put a negative sign on everything here. And 1.9 minus 1 is 0.9. A minus A is 0, so the A term goes away. And B ln 138 minus B ln 14 is that. So I moved some things around to get this on the screen. I apologize for the clearing of the screen here. Let me just rearrange some stuff and get back to where we were. So I have my two equations. I have um, 1.9 equals A plus B ln 138. And my second equation, 1.0 equals A plus B ln 14 and I'll subtract these two equations. So this gives me 0.9. The a's will cancel each other out. And then I get b ln 138 minus b ln 14. I can pull factor a b out. And so I get ln 138 minus ln 14 with a b out front. And b is the thing we're hunting for. So I'll simplify my logs here. I get ln 138 divided by 14, right? The ln of 138 divided by 14 times b. And so my b is going to be 0.9 divided by the natural log of 138 over 14. That's equal to b. And let's run over to the calculator here. And what do we get? We get 0 0.39 here. 1.3933. I'll keep four decimal places. And so I figured out my B value. And then and now what I want to do is I want to calculate A. So I want to take this original equation. So this is 1.0 equals A plus B ln 14. And I want to solve for A. So A is equal to 1.0 minus b ln 14. But I know b now. So a equals 1.0 minus 0 0.3933 times the natural log of 14. So I run to my calculator. Where is my calculator for a? And let me, I think I get a negative value on this. Let me double check. So 1 minus 3.93. Let's get an extra 3 ln 14, yep, and I get A is negative 0 0.0379, and again, I'm keeping four decimal places. So putting this all together, my function, my walking speed, so what was it, my function was S, is equal to negative 0 0.0379 plus 0 0.3933 times the natural log of the population. And we have made a model from our data. And in the next video, what we'll do is we'll look at software. Uh, well, not the next, I'm going to do an exponential model. And then we'll look at software that, that, that can do some of this modeling for us.